So what do I do? A question that I get every day. What do you do? And I'm always stumped. How do I answer that question? What do I do? So the answer that I tell people is this. I am the leader of one of the best gangs in America. <laughs> people look at me and they're like, what? How can this be? How are you the leader of one of the best gangs in America? And I say, well, it's simply true. A fact that you might not have considered. Choirs and gangs are essentially the same structures. Well, how can this be? I thought about this for a long time, many, many, many years, and I look to the writings of Abraham Maslow, one of our favorite psychologists. And so in his book, uh, Motivation and Personality, he presents his hierarchy of needs. In this hierarchy of needs, he basically says that if you want to be a well-motivated, well-adjusted person, you need to meet all of these needs at the bottom, these physiological needs, and then you need to meet these safety needs, and then you need to be loved and feel like you belong, and then you need to have some self-esteem, and then finally, you will begin to realize yourself as a person in society. You will become self-actualized. Actualized. So, how does this all happen? What does that have to do with choirs? What does that have to do with gangs, right? Well, we as humans are innately one-stop shoppers. That's why Target is so profitable. Because I have guests coming over and I need a towel, yeah, and I need a camera, and I'm gonna go to Target because I can go to one place. That's why they are successful. That's why gangs have been so successful because gangs are able to captivate and provide all of these different needs. Choirs can do the same thing. They do do the same thing. People say, well, how do you do that? Well, you know, with physiological needs. We make sure that all of our students come in every day, they have a place to be. Yes, we want to make sure they have food. Yeah, if you don't believe in monsters, take a look at a third grader at 345 after school. <laughs> it's a monster. Right? You need to feed the monster. So it's really important that we do those sorts of things. Otherwise, we can't accomplish our work. So what is this work that we're doing? Yes, it's training voices. Yes, it's you know, building musicians. But the real work that we're doing is changing the lives of youth. That's what we're here to do, to give you academic support, mentoring, all of those sorts of things. And if we can't even talk to you because you know, you're having a tantrum, because you're not well fed, we can't do anything. So that's where we start. That's where we begin the work that we do at the choir school. Then we go on to needs of safety. You know, one student said, uh, well, why I love coming to choir every day is because I'm not out there. Because I'm not out there. In inner cities, it's just having a place to be. That's powerful. Just having a place to be. It's so important. Then we also offer safety. It's a loving environment, of course, where they don't have to be teased or ridiculed. They can simply be. How many places in life can we go and simply be? Very few. Very few. And then we make sure that we shower all of our singers with love. They know that they belong. Yes. They know that they are part of this group. And they also know that they are part of a subgroup. They're split into soprano, alto, tenor, spaces. I'm now with this group of people who have something similar to me. Not just that we love to sing, not just that we're scholars, but her voice is similar to mine, his voice is similar to mine. Very simple. Very, very simple. Creating that environment is key to what we do. Next, we always want to make sure that we're building esteem. Very, very important. Athletics for many years has been seen as one of the best ways to boost self-esteem. And after many years of studies, now we see that the arts are equally great. One of the reasons why is because of achievement. And choirs do that really well. After you've sung Fari's Requiem, you're going to feel pretty accomplished. I promise you will feel accomplished. You build confidence. You respect the people next to you because they've done the same amount of work as you have to get to this place. They respect you, and you respect other artists outside of yourself. You see another choir, oh my gosh, they're great, fantastic. 
right? These are simple, simple things that you learn within the construct of being inside of a choir. But that's not it. It continues on to self-actualization, to want more for oneself. And that's where choirs are particularly unique. You get to be creative, and you understand to perceive yourself accurately. How is that possible? Well, it starts like this, singing in a rehearsal. I sing a wrong note. I perceived it. The conductors uh, perceived it. And everyone else around me, yeah, they look at you like you're crazy. So what do I do? I circle the wrong note. I correct the pitch. And I move on with my life. I identify the problem, I diagnose the problem, I fix the problem. That's problem solving, critical thinking, something we are doing a thousand times in a piece. And I know that because I am human, I'm going to make mistakes, because my instrument is my voice and I am a human, that means I'm flawed and I'm going to sing wrong notes. It's just part of the game. And I understand that there is no such thing as a perfect performance. I know that. But guess what? The idea of perfection is still worth the pursuit. The idea of perfection is still worth the pursuit. And that's what we tell our students. And our students, 100% of them graduate from high school because they understand that it's not about perfection, but the pursuit of the idea. Because they understand how to be motivated, how to be self-started, they understand their context within the community. I'm an individual and I need to raise my voice as a singer, but it's not just about you as a one person in a choir, right? I used to do this joke with my high school students. I'd say, there's no I in choir, and they'd always be like, ha, 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 uh, because obviously there is. But the idea is that you are not a choir of one. You are not. How do you be an individual in the context of a community? That's why choir is so important. That's why our program is so effective. Because yes, I am focused on me and what I am doing, but I am also focused on you and what you are doing. And I am supporting you. And I know when I need to be less and you might need to be more and vice versa. I understand that. These are principles that we just understand as being a part of a choir. And what we learn is to value our teammates, the people around us, those who support us, those who we, in turn, support. We teach each other to care about one another. We teach each other to love art, but more importantly, we teach each other to love humanity. Do you know what that's called? Compassion. The lesson of compassion the untaught lesson that you don't find in a textbook, the untaught lesson that you don't find in a musical score. This is where gangs are different than choirs, and the only place, because we really do fulfill all the same needs. But being in a gang, you cannot properly self-actualize because you do not perceive yourself as others perceive you. You do not care about the greater good. This is why our program is so effective. So when I tell people I am the leader of one of the best gangs in America, I mean it. One of the best gangs. We just need to reshape our definition of a gang. And our students do that every day. They redefine, they revitalize the city, and they reshape what it means to be a musician, to be a scholar, and a partner in the human community. Thank you.